the day, another real world test. Today we're doing it on the Nothing Phone 2. You know, the phone with all the lights on the back. But I am back in New York City, and so we're gonna go explore all while we test out this phone as per the usual. But first things first. Coffee. Check. And in a nod to the founder of Nothing, Carl Pei, who happens to be a Swedish national, welcome to Smur, which is Danish and Norwegian for butter, and is a cafe here in the East Village in Manhattan. It was started in 2019 by two Danish friends, both named Sebastian, weirdly enough, who wanted to introduce Nordic-inspired food to New York. Regardless, Scandinavian in nature, their place is known for baked goods like cardamom buns, or cardamom buller in Swedish. I butchered that for sure, but they're great little sweet twisted buns that kind of resemble cinnamon rolls that have a punch of cardamom flavor. I actually had my first one of these in London in Soho at a place called Soderberg. Again, probably butchered that, but these are just as good. Okay, and while we're here, let's chat about the styling of the Nothing Phone 2. First up, everyone keeps thinking it's an iPhone, and I get it. The flat edges and the general silhouette is very similar, at least from the front. It comes in two colors, dark gray and white. And there's not much difference between it and the phone one, at least at first glance. There are some subtle changes though. From the front, the phone is a bit larger and bezels are a tad smaller, which is always appreciated. The front camera is now centered. And while it's not as noticeable at first glance, but very important, the screen is now much brighter, an issue some people had with the last model. And it makes it much easier to see in direct sunlight now, thankfully. That screen is now also LTPO, so it's 120 hertz and can refresh the image on the display 120 times a second for smoother animations and scrolling, but it can drop down to one hertz or one time a second for when static images are on the display and adapt automatically between the two. The idea being that this saves battery. Now, if you're curious, I have a decoder episode on LTPO that you can check out at the link below. Now, from the side, you'll notice, if they're sitting side by side, that the new Phone 2 is 13% thinner. Even viewing it from the back, there's only a few changes. The middle of the wireless charging coil looks less like a bomb bomb from Mario, and we have some different colored camera casings that are darker, as well as a new red recording LED line instead of a dot dual tone flash instead of single, and some components are just moved around. We also now have curved glass. They call it pillowed glass, which I kind of get why, just on the edges of the back, and that gives it a nice touch, and it just feels nicer to hold than phone one. Also on the back, we have, of course, the glyphs, which we'll dive into more in a minute. This is Union Square, and it's a park in the middle of Lower Manhattan. It gets its name from the location of the intersection of the union of two major roads in New York City, Bloomingdale Road and Bowery Road, which is now Broadway and 4th Avenue. When the commissioner's plan was projected in 1807, the plan that set up the grid system here for the streets in New York City, the former Potter's Field, which is like a common grave, at this intersection was designated as Union Place. It was authorized by state legislature as a public place in 1831, and the city of New York bought it in 1833. The park is mainly an oval shape to highlight the then central fountain, which was installed for the opening of the Croton Aqueduct in 1842, which brought water into New York City at the time when the city was growing exponentially and really needed it. I actually did a video and went to go visit it to test out a drone that I'll link below if you're curious. Now, the fountain was removed during the 1920s subway construction, but the James Fountain statue stands in its place on the west side of the park. Okay, I think we need to talk a little bit about nothing as a company and Carl Pei, its founder, who is often mentioned in the same breath as the company. Carl was the co-founder of the company OnePlus, the 
smartphone maker that you've probably heard of, and he announced his resignation in October of 2020. After raising $7 million in seed funding from friends and private investors, some of whom you might know, like Casey Neistat, the popular YouTuber, Kevin Lin, the co-founder of Twitch, Steve Huffman, the chief executive of Reddit, and Tony Fidel, the inventor of the iPod, actually, and others. He then announced his new company, Nothing in January of 2021. Nine months later, he then received $50 million and a partnership with Qualcomm in October of 2021, and another round of funding from Google Ventures, music group Swedish House Mafia, and others, to the tune of $96 million in June of 2023. He also had two rounds of crowdfunding as well. All in all, he had about eight rounds of funding totaling $250 plus million from 30 or so investors. In 2022, they sold 200 million in revenue from 750,000 units, which were phone ones, and their earbuds combined. To put that into perspective real quick, Apple sold $205 billion in iPhones that same year. Point being that the company, even though not on the scale of say a Samsung or an Apple, obviously, and they're definitely still operating at a loss, isn't doing too bad. And of course, that's important to know more about the company that you're about to buy a product from, especially when they're this new. Also, leads me to something that Carl Pay tends to do, but we'll Talk about that later. Okay, let's talk about the software on the Nothing Phone 2 really quick. Nothing OS 2, coming to the Phone 1 in late August apparently, is now developed in-house instead of a third party. And just like OnePlus back in the day, the OS is minimalistic and there's a focus on speed and responsiveness. The Phone 2 can apparently open apps twice as fast as the Phone 1, for example. And it definitely feels super snappy and optimized like you would expect. We also have a newer Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset, which is last year's flagship processor really, but still a big jump from the mid-range one that they used in the Nothing Phone 1. The OS also, we're told, is aimed at getting you back into the real world and out of your phone. Really where this manifests is the new skin that Nothing has added to the phone that you can choose when you first set it up, which will monochrome everything in the UI, minus splashes of red here and there, because branding. The first one I received the review device, this was an icon pack and it was missing a ton of apps. But since then, Nothing has released a Nothing icon pack from the Play Store that you download, and it makes every icon, no matter how niche, fit the black and white scheme. Now, the idea here is that psychologically, color has an effect on you, and it's one of the reasons why brands choose to make their logos specific colors, as well as their icons. The bigger thing here, though, when it comes to your phone, is that you subconsciously look for the color of the icon more than you think you do, especially when you out of habit tap on Instagram or Facebook, etc., without really thinking about it. Now, Nothing's solution is to make that a bit harder by turning everything to the same black and white look. And it definitely had an effect on me when I first started using the phone, as in like, I actually had a hard time finding some of the apps that I was trying to use. But over time, once I got used to where they were on the home screen, it kind of faded and well, I got used to it. Now, does it help me use my phone less like Nothing has intended? Not really, um, but I do like the minimalistic look. Now, while we're out in the park and it's nice out, Let's also talk about the cameras. Firstly, we have a new 32 megapixel front camera versus the 16 megapixel of the Phone 1. And we have a 50 megapixel Sony IMX890 one by 1.56 inch sensor with one micron sized pixels compared to the 50 megapixel Sony IMX766 one by 1.56 inch sensor with one micron sized pixels. So basically the same binned in sets of four to get a 12.5 megapixel image with two micron sized pixels. And we have an ultra wide camera, which is the same 50 megapixel Samsung JN1 one by 2.76 inch sensor with 0.64 micron sized pixels that get binned in sets of four to get a 12.5 megapixel image with 1.28 micron sized pixels when we're done. And finally, we have the same 2X option in the viewfinder, which punches in on the 50 megapixel main sensor to get a 12.5 megapixel image from the center of that sensor. Now, regardless of the hardware, as we've seen time and time again, the software and tuning can make a huge difference. And here, it's actually pretty noticeable side by side. The new 18-bit ISP versus 14-bit raw image processing and just new algorithms all make for a different image, even from the same hardware ultra-wide cameras. Overall, I think the images look nicer as they have more contrast and are just more consistent between the ultra-wide and the main. Now, don't expect a lot from it in low light situations as it's just a smaller sensor. But regardless, I'll leave it up to you guys as usual from all the samples in the video. You tell me what you think in the comments below.
Speaking of things that light up, today we're checking out Arctic House, which is a digital art space beneath Chelsea Market, which is a great food market in New York City that we've talked about at length in a few episodes, actually. I'll leave a link below if you wanna learn more about that. Arctic House is actually inside of a 100-year-old restored boiler room beneath the market. Arctic House is exactly what the name describes. It's art, tech, house. It's a digital art space, and the exhibit right now is called Beyond the Light. And it was developed in collaboration with NASA scientists using data about our universe and visuals that were captured by the James Webb Space Telescope and the Hubble Telescope. The concept is that it's an artistic interpretation of how humans have experienced light over time, and how we're seeing so much more light that was previously invisible to our eyes. Just like the back of the Nothing Phone 2. Okay, let's talk about the glyphs, as nothing calls them. If you're not familiar, the glyphs are a series of LEDs on the back of the phone that are meant to be used when the phone is face down and can be used to silently notify you about incoming notifications. Here on the Nothing Phone 2, we have 11 LED strips versus the five from the Nothing Phone 1, and they get brighter, but also dimmer than the last model as well. You can activate them by flipping the phone over so it's face down on a table called Flip to Glyph, and there are a collection of them to choose from or you can make your own glyphs, which are based off of ringtones, technically speaking, using a new app made in partnership with one of Nothing's investors, Swedish House Mafia. You can also set them for specific contacts or specific types of notifications to know which ones are coming in. Yes, it's a newer version of LED notification life that we used to have back in the day on our phones. Everything comes full circle doesn't it? You can now also set certain things to essential and have the lights flash only when those specific notifications come in. And something else that I think is actually pretty interesting is that we can now set the glyphs for non-notification type things. A fill light, well, like we did before for the camera, but also because we now have more zones, a timer can be used with them, as well as showing the volume levels of the device at the moment, and they can even be used to show when your Uber driver is arriving and their progress. Now that last part is from nothing opening up their Glyph API to third-party developers, and Uber kind of being one of the ones that just took advantage of that and made this for themselves. But if we know developers, I wouldn't get our hopes up too much for too many of these to happen uh, anytime soon. The notifications can be done using an always-on display or just you know how notifications work where they pop up and using text tell you what app and who is notifying you, but it's fun. And while that may be less quantifiable, it's not nothing. Calling it a night. And for the battery, remarkably, it's still going on the Nothing Phone 2, which if you're familiar with this channel, you'll realize how rare that is, considering just how much I use the camera and the phone on a real world test day. But for those curious, here is my screen on time, my usage for today. And again, keep in mind, it's not a normal day. And here is another day that was a much more normal day, so you can have something to compare it to. And I have to say for the battery, I mean, that kind of speaks for itself. It's pretty solid. It's 4,700 milliamps compared to the 4,500 of the Phone 1. And, well, it just overall, it is just better than the Phone 1 was by a decent amount and, and just solid. And that is only made better when you consider the price of the Nothing Phone 2, which the lowest model is $599. But I will say about the price that this is something that Carl Pei 
does. It's something he did at one plus and he's doing it now. Whereas that he comes in to a new market with a much lower price compared to the features than most other people in the market. And obviously it's a very tried and true way. A lot of other companies have also done that as a way of gaining market share. But in all likelihood, that means he's probably operating at a loss right now at least. And there will come a day, considering how much money he has raised for this company, that he will have to turn a profit and make those shareholders happy, as usually happens. So, while the price is very low now, I expect that slowly he will start to make more premium devices and that price will slowly increase. But, doesn't really matter that much right now for somebody who's just looking to buy this particular phone. That's more of a macro look at what'll probably happen with nothing down the road. So with that said, it's a pretty solid phone. I mean, the only other phone that I would maybe think about looking at is the Pixel 7a, which we used for comparisons, and I'll leave that up to you guys, which one you preferred uh, throughout this entire video. I personally might prefer a lot of the photos that come out of the Pixel, but the Nothing Phone 2, especially considering the jump from the Nothing Phone 1, is still pretty solid. The battery life is definitely better on the Nothing Phone 2 than it is on the Pixel 7a, so... Mm -hmm. But you guys tell me what you think. Which would you rather choose and what do you think of the Nothing Phone 2 so far from the videos, including this one that you've seen in the comments below. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. Now, as always, I will leave a link to the best price that I can find on this phone, and I'll try to update it as much as I can in the description below, should you be interested in that or just learning more about it. But there you go. Uh, if you like this video, please check out the rest of the Real World Test series. We test a lot of other tech while we explore a lot of other places, and I'll leave that link below. Appreciate it. As for me, it has been a very long day of filming, as these days always are. Really hope you guys appreciate my weird little format. Again, let me know in the comments below what you think of it. But I am exhausted, so good night. Children screaming. First up, truck. First up, truck, always. Now it comes in two colors, dark gray, children screaming, whistles. Maybe that's why the children are screaming. There's a game happening of some sort nearby. I would pick to record next to some sort of sporting event. Hmm. Yeah, it's definitely a sporting event. There's a whistle again. Screaming! Amazon Prime guy with his cart. This guy's having a conversation with me, but he keeps pacing towards me. Random, whatever, shitty record. It was authorized by state legis- car. Okay, so I think we need to camera. I bet you that's in every shot. <laughs> Great. You gone, sir? Nope. Bringing all the chairs out. Great timing. Always great timing. Back of the nothing phone too. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> yes, it's a newer version of LED notification lights that we used to have back in the day on our phones. God, burnt the front of the fur fur. Oh yeah. It's a good laugh though. <laughs> Contagious. I want him to leave, but I'm happy for him. And he makes me smile for now. <laughs> it's a good laugh. It's contagious. It's nice. I just would, I just, he needs to stop listening to funny things for a little bit. Just a little bit. It's like an evil scientist laugh. <laughs> so good.